We're so glad that we can offer ourselves to lift up your name. We can follow you. Lord Jesus, your name is above every name. We praise you. We pray that you bless us this morning. Lord, thank you for all the things you begin in our lives, in our church, the things that we're doing with the homeless. Lord, we thank you that we thank you that we're able to be there for you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. so happy to be here this morning we had a, a great time yesterday we were leading the worship some of us and some other folks from other uh, churches joined us and they had the Christian Bikers Club breakfast and we were over at another church and there was a bunch of bikers for Jesus and it was funny because I looked out there and it was like, wow, thank God there's Christians. <laughs> because they were, you know, they're bikers. They're a rough crew. But it's so awesome to see how God ministers to people no matter what we look like on the outside. Isn't that awesome? No matter what we look like on the outside, God sees the sees our heart, huh? He sees us. He sees the inside of us. And what does it say? Does he like, does he, for God so loved the clean people? For God so loved the people that had it all together? For God so loved the, let's celebrate that this morning.
Jesus for loving us.
know about you, but that is an awesome feeling to know that we are in the hands, the best hands. He's holding us. He's watching over us. He's protecting us. He is planning for us. And you know what? The beginning and the end, everything in between, we are assured that it will be good. Sometimes it will be hard. But until that day comes, Lord, let our minds, help my mind to be fixed on you knowing, Lord, that everything is working for the good of those that love you. Hallelujah. Everybody grateful this morning? before the throne and tell him. Father, we're ready. Dig down deep. Here we go. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the
Worship him, so I throw up my hands. So I throw up my hands. for all of your blessing in our lives, oh God. Those that we see, and even those, Lord, that are manifold, we have not seen. And so, Lord, we're so grateful for your grace in our lives, your mercy, your favor, Lord. Thank you, God, for giving us all, every, spiritual blessing to be the people that you've called us to be, Lord. To be the mommies you, you want us to be, Lord. To be the daddies you needed us to be, Lord. To be the spouses that you need us to be, Lord. To be the neighbors, Lord, that you need us to be, Lord. Honoring children, Lord, the children that honor their parents, Lord. You've given us everything that we need to be a blessing to those around us, Lord. And that's what we want to be. 
following along in your model for us, Lord, your example. To be a blessing to those around us, Lord. We're so grateful. We're so thankful. blessings, with all of this favor that you poured upon us, hear our cry, Lord. We know there's always, with you, more. So let it come, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you in your name. Do you believe that this morning? Somebody say amen. Amen. Let's get out of our seats for a few moments and let's share that love, share that grace, share that blessing with those around us.
All right. Well, we're so excited to be here hanging out and just doing whatever God has called us to do. And uh, so, um, April, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we did um, yesterday and what, what the whole thing was all about, please? And uh, since you were, yeah, since you were like a, a coordinator and an assistant and all that, so um, April's going to give a little uh, spiel about what went down yesterday. Oh, we had a, uh, our, the first of the year um, quarter biker breakfast that um, BCJC hosts is Broken Chains of Jesus Christ, and each host group does it a quarter and they come and they help and they serve they set up um the night before we get a bunch of people and they set up the tables and the chairs and we cut up all the food and get it ready for the next day and make sure that the uh worship team is ready and and all that and then the next morning um those of us that get there early we set up and make sure the food gets going and everything and then we just get a bunch of people out there and wait for everybody to come in and we serve them we serve them breakfast and um, it's for the kingdom is what it's for. It's not for us, and it's not just saying, hey, this is what we do. It's for the kingdom, and it's to get all like-minded bikers together and bring their families and let them know, hey, these bikers aren't bad. Hey, these people aren't bad. We are all one in Christ. And that's why we do it, to get everybody together, you know, every quarter to make sure that we can praise and worship him and, and learn all about what God is doing for us in our lives. Yesterday, I'm not sure. One, there was 21 rousters and then extras. So um, I believe there was a, about 160 yesterday. About 160 showed up, and then there were extras with their family and their kids showed up as well. And everybody's invited. It, you don't have to ride motorcycles to come. It's everybody can come. And um, most of the time, it's just there to serve and love one another and learn from each other is what we did. So. That was great. We had, um, we had been a part of that in uh, other capacities in the past, and so it was good to be uh, involved with that uh, in a different setting. And um, it was just great time to worship together and to see all of those bikers with their jackets, with their, you know, their vests out there. And their patches on the back, they have different names, you know. What are some what are some of the names? Share with share with us some of the names you remember, Tracy. Oh, the Christian Motorcyclist Association, um, Soldiers for Jesus, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember very many. Um Oh, of course broken chains and uh, um Oh I can't remember very many. Keepers of the cross. Oh, keepers of the cross, that's right, that's right. Uh, Sabbath keepers, chariots, fire, um, hell raisers. Yeah, the hell raisers were there. Uh, hell fighters, hell fighters. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes the names sound a little bit rhetorical, but you know, <laughs> um, uh, it's a good bunch. It's a very good bunch. It's uh, there's 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 more than thirty Christian groups in Kern County. Um, uh, it's, it's yeah, Christian biker groups. So it's, it's very encouraging. So, yeah, just to clarify, they're not hell raisers. They were hell fighters. <laughs> yeah. Now, there is a group there that called that, but they, they weren't there. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. That's right. So, to clarify, uh, because there's a lot of um, politics and protocol for some of these biker clubs that exist in this world they you know if they they feel like you can't call yourself a club there's a way you gotta wear your patch you can't wear it a certain way yeah like, if you do wear it a certain way then you're gonna be a club and now you know you there's there's a way you got a certain you gotta act rocker yeah so they got all these little protocols that they gotta abide by but so they're a cl they're not a club they're a group so take it off that's their one of their rules but it's 
the, but these um, bike clubs are, um, the Christian bike clubs, they're there to reach out to the bikers because they need Jesus too. Yeah, exactly, a little opening for them. And so uh, Tracy, he's, he's, uh, he's t showed with, t shared with me stories of how, you know, he's, because one of the un, um, what is it, unsaid rules is when you see somebody broken on the side of the road, broken down as a motorcycler, and you're a motorcycle, you got to stop and help them. So he stopped. He told me a story where he stopped with a guy, shared his testimony with him, and gave him a little, uh, um, they have these, um, yeah, so go to talk a little bit about that. Oh, the serenity rag has the, uh, uh, has the uh, serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I don't have one in my pocket today. I have them on the bike. But um, um, it's a way, it's a, a, a uh, icebreaker. It's a way to get started to be talking about Jesus. And it, and it works really well. The people are very, very receptive to it, and they love the rags. And uh, um, when we get to share our testimonies, we get to share at gas stations, at, at uh, roadside stops, with people that are broken down. Um, <laughs> heck, I've even shared in CVS and uh, 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 <laughs> uh, Office Depot. So, yeah, restaurants, yes, restaurants, Walmart. Um, it, it's, 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 it's terrific, uh, um, uh, the way we get to share our, our, our patches and our jackets draw attention. People ask, what's broken chains? And it's, thank you, Jesus, for opening the door. I, I get to share. That and, uh, just that one more. There you go. That one more. So, thanks. Awesome. So we were able to hang out with her. So it was um, Ross led the worship, led in the, in the singing. Charles was on the guitar. Uh, we had another guy named, um, named Al. Uh, he was on the bass guitar. He's play, he, you might have seen him around. He's played with us in other gatherings. And then we had another drummer who was from Valley Baptist. He joined us and played. And uh, he's, he's helped us a couple of times. So um, it was a community effort. Then, uh, of course, me on the keyboard. And we set up to, you know, get everything ready. And we just want to be a blessing to our community, you know. And so this is another segment of, of people that, hey, we never get to interact with. And, and uh, one of the cool things, we were able to celebrate... Um, an accomplishment of one of our members here. Come over here, Jennifer. Jennifer actually uh, got to share her testimony yesterday amongst all those folks there. So it was a great testimony. So um, that was pretty cool. Tell us a little bit about that and then the other thing. I did a mini money, not my testimony, but um, I got to say how I became to CR, what it's done for me, and what I would tell others it could do for you. And that would give you closer to God, closer to grace, and closer to knowing the true you and forgiving for all the past sins you've committed or that have been committed against you. Beautiful. And then at the end, after me crying and babbling through that because it was hard for me, I got to honor Sister April for all she's done in the community from church, CR, and Broken Chains. And what, what, was the, um, what, what was the main reason why that? She was actually nominated for people who are doing things in America and it's an honor that she got that she didn't want to talk about because she's not prideful. <laughs> yeah, so she got nominated for, uh, for who's who in America. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she got nominated for that. So kudos to you. Usually it's anonymous. It's anonymous, whoever puts your name. Yeah, so um, so they, they were able to shit, to celebrate that. We're a little big church. <laughs> we're a little powerful church. We're like a you know a ghost, um, a ghost chili. We're really small, but it's powerfully strong. <laughs> and that's why, because God is in us. God is doing some amazing things. What have we been celebrating? Um, with uh, the scriptures that in Ephesians chapter 1, what have we been celebrating and rejoicing and singing about? What? Who we are in Christ and what God has given us. You know, we've, um, what, what does it say in um, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3? You guys remember that? What does it say about God towards us? You want to pull that up? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. This is the thing. This is why we celebrate. This is what is in us. This is why we're powerful. Remember? Somebody flex. Flex your muscle. 
Let me see your muscle, somebody. Come on. Okay, this is your physical muscle. That's your physical muscle. Look at that. Some of them are like, "Woo, man, I've been working out with my son. You know, I'm like lifting more weight. He like, he, um, at first I was benching more than him, and now he's been working out a lot more. Like, he's benching more than me. He's way more powerful than me because he's got in the backyard, so he gets stronger and stronger. I'm like, man, I can't even keep up, keep up with you. You're killing me, son. Getting stronger physically, but it's nothing. Look at what it says. Some, let's read it together. Why are we praising God? See it, say it together. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. You, got, you only have a few blessings? You only have a few blessings? Every. You are in Christ. You see? Now you can flex that muscle. I got what I need. Whatever is coming my way because God has blessed me. Now, what are you going to believe? Are you going to believe your experience? Are you going to believe your reality? Or are you going to believe God's word over you? What's more powerful? Huh? Then let's act like it. Let's stand. Let's, let's sit in it. Relax in it. Enjoy the spiritual blessings that God has poured upon you and me. It is beautiful. Let's go to chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And let's just ask the Lord to, show, to help us understand his word because we need his help. Lord, we, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. And we just pray, Lord, you pour upon your people an ability from your heavenly, from your spiritual blessings to understand your word, O oh God, to us. And let it take root and transform and build up. Let it heal. Let it empower. Let it bring resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Ephesians chapter 2, what we're going to do is we're just going to read through just to, as a review because we did go through this. Um, we went through this last week, but what, um, what I want to do is I want to move forward, but I, I don't like to sort of jump over the scriptures because I, it's, it's, it's transforming. So I was like, well, we read this already, but see, God's word, we're meditating on God's word, and I can't change you. Hello? Wives, look at your husband. Look at your spouse and say, look at him and say, I can't change you. <laughs> okay? Parents, look at your kids. <laughs> you can't change them. <laughs> we can't look at. We can. This is what we try to do, isn't it? We try to change each other. Pa kids, you can't change your parents. Sorry. <laughs> God's word does the transforming. And when we communicate to people, when we work, we want to help people understand as well, that that does the changing. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, does this world need to be changed? Does this world need to be changed? Beginning where? <laughs> right here. Begins with that person that you see every morning in the mirror. Begins right here. And God's word does the changing. That's why we speak God's word. That's why we meditate on God's word, because that's going to do the changing. As for you, you were dead in transgressions and sins. Now, the scriptures is true, and we have to own some of these things. Sometimes we run from the God's word, don't we? Remember in the Garden of Eden, what did Adam and Eve do when God was looking for them in the garden? They, they hid from him. It's embarrassing. We're naked, Lord. <laughs> Who told you you were naked? See, this is what, it brings shame to us. And what do they try to do to cover it up? Huh? Fig leaves. Wow, that, fit, that, that probably felt good on their skin, huh? All that itchy fuzz. Really? <laughs> it's horrible. And they got to, it dies, and they got to get another one. So how did God fix that? What did he do for them? You remember what he did for them? Huh? 
He, yes, he made skins for them and clothed them. It says, Scripture says in Genesis, it says, and God clothed them with animal skins. God did it. They didn't clothe themselves. That's just what we try to do. But God's word, he's trying to tell you, own the way you are, and then watch God clothe you with his righteousness. Watch God clothe you. Now, what had to happen? What did, if, he, if God created animal skins for them, what had to happen to that animal? It had, had to be sacrificed. And that's what Jesus was. It's a foreshadowing of the sacrifice of Jesus. And so, because Jesus came into this world, he died because our, we were dead in our transgressions and sins. Own it. Say, yes, that was me. Somebody say, yes, that was me. All right. When we own, that's called confession. You agree. Confession is actually agreeing with what God says is true. Confessing his word. It's called, the word confession in scripture is called homo logeos. That's what the original word is. What does homo mean? Same. What does logos mean? Word. Same words. That's what confession is. We're using the same words that God uses, and that's what we confess is true. Confession. I am dead in my transgressions and my sins. I'm, I'm away from you. I'm apart from you. That's right. But what's the, what is, it says you were. How many of thank God that we were? I, you know, last week my... My grandson, he was here, Carter, and he was all happy. He's like, I asked him, so what did you learn in church? Because he didn't want to go in the children's uh, church. He was here. He said, what did, I asked him, what did you learn last week? He said, well, I, I didn't know I was, I didn't know I had transgressions and I was dead in my sins. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's true. That, 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 I didn't know that. But thank Jesus, you know, yeah, I was, but not no more. That was the thing that I was, the, the fair phrase I was using is that we were dead in our transgression. We were messed up. We were clothed in our fig leaves. It didn't work, but not no more. We were, but not no more. So we were like all happy, you know. I was, but not no more. <laughs> Yesterday, I mean last week, it was funny. But scripture, we're agreeing with the word. As for you, you were dead in transgressions, past tense and sins. Verse 2. In which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. He's describing where all those behaviors, all these confusion, all these leading the, down the wrong road and stuff. We were impressionable by the spirit of this world. That's, that's just normal. When you are separated from God, when we're in our transgressions, that is what you're going to do. Some people might say, well, but, you know, we, there are people that don't go to church or but that aren't godly or not born again, and they live a moral life outside. They might live a moral life. There are people that are, you know, you know, they like to adhere to the rules or whatever on the outside. But on the inside, what's going on in their mind, the way they look at people, all that God sees like you did it. Yeah. That's the way he sees. That's, that's his righteousness goes, it's bone deep. It's not just what, see, what, what you see on the outside. It's also on the inside. He sees it. Because we were all disobedient. We were all transgressing. We all sinned. We missed the mark. We all failed. We all, there was a, a line that we couldn't cross. We all are rebellious. We crossed those lines. Whether it's in our mind, whether it's in word, whether it's in deed. All those are ways that are expressed that were broken, and that we were following the ways of this world. You used to live. I was, but not no more. Not no more. Next verse. <laughs> Next verse. Verse 3. All of us lived among them at one time. Now, what is he talking about here? Lived among them. Them. Who's them? Yeah, the disobedient. Uh, but what he's leading, he's, he's leading a, a lot of the, the discussion to is like, he's going to be bringing up the Gentiles. 
you know, and how they lived without being brought up as Jewish people, too. And so he's bringing that. There was, there was a sense of, uh, of godliness that was supposed to be established by Israel. But because we weren't part of that group, we were Gentiles. We were sinners. We were, weren't brought up in that. And so we were among them, the Gentiles, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Let me ask you a question. Whatever my flesh wants, whatever my thoughts want, the desires, let me ask you, is it good? I would say, yeah. I mean, there, I mean, there are some things that our body needs. You know, there's medicines. You know what? There's some things you need right now, or else you, we take you to the hospital. Oxygen. You need some oxygen. You need some water. You need some donuts. <laughs> You need sleep. So, in other words, there's a balance. How do we navigate that? God helps us. He, tell, he, he shows us the things that we need and the balance that's needed in our lives. We're not focused on what our flesh wants. We're focused on what God wants. So we are following our desires and our thoughts because oh, that's the way we were, but not no more. Um, like the rest... We were, by nature, what were we deserving of according to the scripture? You see, I thank God for my salvation. I thank God I'm saved. You know what I'm saved from? The wrath. The wrath of God. And this is the thing. It's not that God is mean and God is angry. No. But see, he's a God of love. He's a God of mercy. And he's a God of justice. You know, and that's the reason why Jesus had to be sacrificed in that way. He absorbed that right there, the wrath of God. He absorbed that wrath for you and me. Isn't that beautiful? He absorbed it. Thank you. Why would you not want to say, thank you, Jesus? Look at him in the face. Thank you. That, that was, I should have been on the cross. I should have been beat. I should, that, that, for my sins, you did all that for me. You absorbed God's wrath. Thank you, Lord. That's why we sing that song. Gratitude. We're so thankful to the Lord for what he's done. Next verse. But because of his great love for us. So this is the way we were. We were in darkness. We were, we transgressed. We sinned. We were headed for wrath, the wrath of God. What's that first word in that sentence? In a good way. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, without end, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. See, they sing about it. They write songs about the mercies of God. And it's fresh every morning. When you wake up, have you had a really bad day? You looked in the mirror and said, wow, you followed the desires of the flesh today, didn't you? <laughs> Looking in the mirror, like, wow, it was pretty bad. The mercies of God, they're new every morning. Rich mercies of God. But because of God's great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, what did he do? Next verse, made us alive. We were dead in our transgressions. Now we are made alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. Even when we were in the midst of all that nonsense, God is getting us and coming and bringing us out and wanting to bring us into a relationship with him, making us alive. And what does he say? It is by grace you have been saved. 
the grace of God. By grace, we have been saved. He's got to make this statement because when God's blessing starts overflowing and taking effect in our lives, you know how you get, you know what happens? For those who are out of control, you start behaving. <laughs> you start following God. You start getting close to God. You start embracing holiness. And guess what happens when people do that? I've seen it a million times. You know what happens when people that are out in the world, and they're all messed up, God cleans them up, they get a job, they're, they're good to their neighbors, they start doing good for a little bit of time. Guess what happens? You know what happens? Sometimes they fall, but before that, you know what, what, is, what does it say? What does Scripture say? What comes before a fall? Pride. They start thinking, I did this. I, I helped myself. Very, I've seen this so many times in legalistic churches and groups and people. It's like, um, you know, it's like they, when they first started, they came to church or they came to an outreach. They didn't have no Bible. Then somebody gave them a Bible. I so, I'm so thankful that God gave me that. I got this Bible. Then they start getting cleaner and more. They said, they're wearing a suit and tie to church. And then I see their Bible gets bigger and their Bible gets bigger. And before you know it, they got a little suitcase and like it's on rollers. And they're like, I'm going to church. You should be going to church. Why aren't you going to church? Da, 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 you know. <laughs> this is why God had to put this in here. It is by grace you have been saved. He's reminding us. Next verse. And God has raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Who did it? God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So where are we seated right now? Come on, somebody, sit down and relax in those heavenly places. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I'll tell you what. When I was younger, I hated relaxing. I was constantly on the go. I did. I was constantly on the go. Now, I love my recliner put it up you know just ask Alice are you gonna get up today <laughs> are you gonna do something <laughs> but we are seated with Christ you know what that means you can relax in Jesus you can relax in Jesus you know I tell you what this world a lot of a lot of this world they don't know how to relax you know they're you know uh, it, 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 um, there are a lot of so many young people now you know what they suffer from anxiety <laughs> it's like anxiety is everywhere it's like they're anxious everywhere like, what's gonna happen I don't, the sky is falling you know we got, we got chicken little everywhere you know it's like, did you hear the sky is falling yeah I heard it too well hey did you hear the sky is, yeah I heard, we got to tell everybody the sky's falling Be seated. Be seated in heavenly places, just like heaven, just like heaven on earth, to be walking in his favor and graces. It's just like heaven. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And there is no worry there. There's no anxiety there. And God is teaching us how to capture and experience that are you open for that are you open for that but you don't know Anthony we got an event that has to take place people aren't showing up we got some food we got some eggs we got some papas and chorizo that need to be cooked what are we going to do you know we got to set up the wiring for all of the, the sound stuff the technology what are we going to do our worship leader, he's not even here yet. <laughs> What's going to happen? Is God going to be here? He can't be here if our worship leader's not here. <laughs> Just relax in Jesus. There's so much to worry about. There is. But we got to sort of tell, we got to tell our flesh, put our flesh in check and say, hey, I was like that but not no more. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. For some of you guys, some of us, need. I need to receive that. I need to practice that. Some of you are like, I'm running from that. <laughs> Embrace it. Turn around <laughs> and say, okay, you got me. I'm going to rest in Jesus. God has raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Man, I'm not here. You see me here? I'm not here. I'm, in, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. And when Jesus sees me, when God sees me, you know what he sees me? He sees me relaxing. Hanging out with Jesus, you know. What's up, Jesus? You know, Jesus, what's, what's going to happen in, in the future? He's like, you're going to see. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to blow your mind because I've blessed you with every blessing, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. You haven't even seen what I'm going to do yet. All right, Jesus, well, let's let it happen. Can you, can you speed it up a little bit, though? <laughs> and then what is he going to tell me? You need to just be seated. Just relax. You know, my, one of the things that I used to do, I used to get on everybody's nerves. And I used to walk, go around. <laughs> it's like, no. Yeah. It's like, um, I would find, usually I was like, I would interact with a lot of people that I knew sort of had a lot of anxiety or whatever. Or there was a situation that was, you know, a lot of um, uh, worry. There's things aren't fall, coming into place. You know what I, my favorite saying was? Calm down. <laughs> and what, what, is, what, is, what initially happens? I'm going to call you, tell me. <laughs> and then so, and then, then after that, I started, I started realizing, I started saying, okay, I'm taking it a little too far. Not everybody knows my joking style. And so uh, I, said, I just say, just CD. CD, what does that mean? Calm down. <laughs> CD. <laughs> they wanted to kill me. I was the, like I, I started in a new worship, uh, a new church. I was um, the worship pastor there, and I'm, and, you know, you know. Let me just tell you something about musicians, especially in churches and stuff. One of the things about there, there's this old saying: musicians are temperamental. They're half temper and they're half mental. So I had a lot of temperamentals. Charles, you once were but not no more. <laughs> and so, I, so there's always a little remnant, but when you hang out with musicians that are like that, you know, temperamental, and they're like, you know, it's like, all right. Um, you know my sort of, uh, my humor, like, you're temperamental. It's, uh, it's coming out. You don't know what's coming next. You want this key. What chord are we going to do it in? When we, what's the next song? Uh, calm down. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> but God has raised us up and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm above it all. I'm not just looking around. I don't see, I don't see this the way people see this, the way normal people see this, this earthly vision. We have a heavenly vision. We're above these things, and when we see things coming our way, it's like, wow. I can't wait to see, God, how you're going to squash the devil on this. I can't wait to see how you're going to squash the devil and thwart all of his plans that he's throwing at us right now, all the fiery darts. I can't wait to see how you're going to show everyone that we're seated with Jesus in the heavenly realm. Hallelujah. You see, it's fun. When, you, when you're on a team that's dominating everything, dominating the, the darkness, it's fun. It's like, wow. How are you going to win this one, Jesus? Are you gonna, so here's one of the, one of the uh, sort of to, just to give you a little insight of sort of my background on uh, sports. I love sports. I know I, I, sh I would share that in, um, on, when I would go overseas, and I would share it with some of the people. Like, oh, yeah, I used to play basketball. I like, oh. And so I remember I was in Honduras. And I was the one. I was staying with the host family, and um, the kid was interpreting <laughs> to his dad. You know, we were sitting around the breakfast table, and so I asked him what if he, you know, what kind of hobbies he used to do. And I told him, well, I used to play basketball. I used to play football. I would, um, you know, used to dive and swim, and I would do all this stuff. And then, and then he he told it to the son. Told it to his dad. 
right there at the breakfast table. And then, um, and then he, the dad tells the son something, and then the son starts laughing. <laughs> and then the dad goes, you know, no, 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 no. And then I tell him, hey, what, what's, it, what's he laughing? What are you laughing about? He's like, oh, man, I don't want to. He said that to tell you. And said, what, tell him. What, what, tell me, what did he say? He said, you don't look like it. <laughs> oh, I agree, man. I was like... <laughs> But one of the things I like to do is I, competition wasn't for other people. I had competition with myself. When I, I play in sport, a lot of team sports. And so if I was in a, if I was in a, like we would play basketball, and I had, I would keep mental stats in my mind for myself. And it really wasn't a matter of, because um, I want to improve. That's it. Improving. So if I had five rebounds in a game, I would say, okay, well, next, thing, next game I'm going to get seven rebounds. You know, that's what I would do. And people would be like, oh, you lost, Anthony. I was like, it's okay. I know I'm improving. And I just, would just get better and better and better. It's just, you know, and before you know it, you know, I'm getting points. I'm getting rebounds. I'm doing all this stuff. Not because I'm trying to beat somebody else. Because I have been in competition with my stuff, with, with the things that I'm going, going through. That I, you know, I got it going on. So what I would do is I would play around, if I, I would play a game that I knew I was really good at, but to make it interesting, I would have to allow people to, you know, get a little bit ahead, you know? This is what I would, my favorite thing to do, is I would like to let people get ahead a lot, and then I would just say, okay, okay, Anthony, now your goal is to um, remove their spirit from their life. <laughs> And I would go, and I would play, and then before you know it, I would win the game. And then I'm like, what happened, man? Man, you were doing so good. You know, that was sort of like my little strategy. And um, unfortunately, I, where, where I really learned, I hope you're not watching Lloyd uh, online, but, but that was my, I, had my, I had my brother, and that was my favorite thing to do. I was like, oh, Lloyd, you're beating me. You know, you're, you got, you're so far ahead of me, man. I don't know if I can make it. You know, I don't know if I can, if I can handle it. And then I would just, you know... <laughs> I look at God like that sometimes, you know, like he lets the devil get ahead a little bit. He lets the enemy sort of say, seem like he's winning. And it's like, I'm looking at Jesus like, okay, God, how are you going to do this again? How are you going to mess with this right here? And I go, watch this. I'm going to, I'm going to take his spirit from him. <laughs> I'm going to just smash him. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, you know what? I'm going to make him think that he's got my most precious prize in the world. Who's that? Jesus, my son. And I'm going to make him think that he is, he is won. He has killed my most precious thing in the world. And that, and that, that the hope of all humanity is it, it's all gone because he killed my precious son. I'm going to make him think that way. You know, but he doesn't know that this is the exact way that I'm going to get not just my son to be exalted, but even you knuckleheads that are out there that that turn your backs on me in the garden. I'm going to not just raise up my son. I'm going to raise all of you who put your hope in him and put your trust in him. And anybody who does that, he's going to be seated in any places. And everyone who believes and trusts in him is going to be seated with my son in heavenly places. Woo! And he does it again and again in different ways, in our finances, in our homes, in our relationships, in our profession, in our future hopes, in our dreams, in our grandkids, our kids, our great-grandkids, everything that God has in store for us, he, this is what he's doing. He's showing everybody that I seated them in heavenly places just like I did my son. Next verse. In order. Why do, this is, just tells you. Why is he doing this? Why is he doing this? In order that in the coming ages, talking about the future, he might show. See, he's, because the way he's doing this, winning, and us making us winners, it's a, an example that he's pointing to everyone to see. He might show the incomparable riches of his grace. You see, he's going to point to that. He's going to say, that's an example of my incomparable riches of my grace and expressed in his kindness to us 
in Christ Jesus. Next verse. Verse 8. For it is by grace you have been saved. Say that again. Say that together. For it is by grace you have been saved. Say it again. You see, remember, sometimes when we think we're cleaned up, we think we got it all put together, he's reminding us. It is by grace that you have been saved. You didn't deserve it. Never will you ever deserve the favor of God. It's all by his grace. And his favor is all over you and me. And how do we get it? Through faith. Now let me ask you, if, I was, if you were walking through the desert and you, for five days, four days, and you were at the brink of death, and you came to a little abandoned house. Nobody's there. Can't even believe a house was there in the desert. And you saw it had a water spigot sticking out on the side of the house like we have water, water, water faucets around the house. And you're like, there's no way that this house could have water. And you turn it on. And you look. And you see the water hose. And you see at the end of the water hose, what do you see coming out of there? Water. And you go over there, and you start drinking that water. You're so excited that you're drinking water because you were about to give up the ghost. Your lips are all chapped. You know, you're finally getting hydrated. And you say, ah, oh, you're done. Are you going to say, wow, thank God for the water hose? Are you going to say that? Are you going to focus on looking at the water holes and like, is that, is that quenching your thirst? The water. We have been saved through faith. You see, that's what faith is. Faith is the water hose. Sometimes people get a real focused on faith, like that's the main thing. Faith is just a water hose that the water runs through. And so when we are Putting our faith and trust in the Lord, it is simply unlocking what God has in store for us. Don't get too focused on the mechanism that the grace is flowing through. Focus on the grace of God, the mercy of God. We've been saved by grace. Hallelujah. What do you got to do to earn it? Huh? Well, we, well we, first of all, we can't earn it, but we, yeah, we do. I mean, we have faith, but we believe that it is a, what's the last word? Or second, uh, third to the last word? It's a gift. You cannot do anything to earn a gift. You can earn a wage, but you can't earn a gift. It is a gift from the gift giver. Next verse. Not by works. Why is, this, why is this emphasis made? Because you know what? This is, uh, um, it, it makes a difference in people's lives when you understand God's blessing and God's favor and grace upon you. It makes a difference in your life so much so that it elevates you. It gives you ability. And, you know, the, the, the psalmist said, everything that I lay my hand on because of the favor of God is on me. What does it say? Prospers. God has given you favor. It's like things are, I'm not even trying to make it, I'm not even trying to make ends meet. God, God's blessing is everywhere. There's a tendency when we have God's favor and the wind blowing and we're running downhill, we think, oh man, I'm a fast runner. No, God just made the, the land this way and now you can run faster. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going fast on the ocean. No, you're not. You just raised your sail, and the wind of the Spirit blew, is blowing you forward wherever you need to go. This is all by the grace of God. We think sometimes because we're getting to where we need to go, the wind of the Spirit is behind us. We are doing things fast, or, you know, we had the favor of God. It just, we're winning races, and, and God is just, his blessings all over us. Everybody sees that there's a tendency to say, I did it. And instead of singing, how great thou art, you're singing, what are we singing? How great I am. How great I am. 
how great I am. That's why one of the, that's why it's one of our pet peeves that I try to, uh, you know, put forward is, you know, let's not get caught up in titles. Let's not ca get caught up in groups and numbers and all these things. It's, uh, these are all little things that sort of make us feel like how great I am. <laughs> Puffed up. We are humbling ourselves because what does it say? Not by works so that no one can boast. And I'm sick and tired of hearing pastors, leaders, preachers talk about how great their ministry is, how great they are, how great, how much money they have, how many planes they have, how many what, a Rolls Royce they have, all these things. He's like, yeah, are you ever going to brag about Jesus? How good he has been? How merciful he is, he is and how loving he is to the lost? How he can reach the dirtiest most, the, the sinniest, <laughs> the sinniest most person in the world and how his grace can touch them and lift them up and show everyone a person who was unworthy of respect. Now people are listening to how their life was changed by the grace of God so that no one can boast. And we're going to boast about Jesus. We're going to just talk about Jesus. Next verse. For we are God's handiwork. You see, all of this is on purpose. He is doing something. And what is the Greek word for this handiwork right here? You guys know? Some of you guys might have heard me talk about this. We are God's handiwork. Are you God's handiwork? Yes, you are God's handiwork. You know what the, the original wor uh, word is for that word? Handiwork? Poema. You are God's Poema. That's where we all get the word poem. We are God. You know, another one, there's another um, version that says we are God's masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. You see why we need to sort of be reminded that it's by the grace of God? <laughs> I'm walking around. I'm his masterpiece. You know, and so we have to be reminded it is only by his grace that I am his masterpiece and I am his handiwork. He is doing amazing things. But see, we're not just a masterpiece that's just supposed to go on the wall like that picture right there. You see that, one, that picture right there? It's, it'll be there tomorrow. You know, you go to sleep, it's still going to be there. It's just not, gonna, it's not doing really anything. It's just there. But what, we are not that kind of masterpiece. For we are God's handiwork, God's masterpiece, God's poema, Created in Christ Jesus. Why? To do good works. You see, God's grace and mercy, we don't, it is not by works that we're saved. We're saved by grace, but because we're his masterpiece, we work. Work is not a derogatory word, okay? Somebody feel, I don't want to work. I don't think we should work. Work, 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 work. You know what work is? It's a four-letter word. <laughs> we are God's workmanship. We are created to work. And I'll tell you something. You know, here, here's one of the reasons why people sort of run from work, because they haven't found why or what the masterpiece that God has put together. They found, haven't found why they were created. They haven't found their position. They haven't found what they were created, what they enjoy. And so they're like a square block in a round hole. And so they're not in the place that they were created for. But they're going to make it work. They're going to make it fit. You know, and what happens? They're the most miserable people in the world. <laughs> and you know how we know? Because their family told us. <laughs> Some of you were raised in a family where there was abuse, all kinds of stuff, because people were trying to force a square block into a round hole. They didn't surrender to Jesus and see that he, we are his handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. He prepared these things. And this is the fun of Christianity. This is the fun of walking with the Lord. Is he, he's created it for us to do. 
And now the, the adventure is on for where, where are we going to go? What am I going to do? Show us, Lord, what the next step is. How, how, you know, why is this in my life? Why is it? I'll tell you why. Now with the discussion, the communication, the fellowship we have is like, it's more like, wow, Lord, that's interesting. About my life, this was going on here, and what was that all about? I'll tell you, son. I was, I, you're my handiwork. I did that, and now, now guess what's going to happen? You're going to be able to identify with some of those bikers. You like bikes? You, really, you know, you like the patches and all that stuff? Well, you, that's okay. Now you can connect with people that are in biking. What about, you know, Lord, I was, you know, I was addicted. Why, what, how's that all of, and now you set me free, but what, what it was all about? Well, now you're going to help people get off of addiction. You're going to help people walk the steps to get out of that whole situation. Oh, but Lord, you know, I was just a, a, a housewife and I was just bored at home. And what, what, why was all that about? Well, that was because there, there's other bored housewives. And I want you to reach out to some of those ladies and you're going to minister to them because you know exactly what they're going through. And they're going to say, wow, somebody hears me. Somebody knows what I'm going through. And you're going to tell them it's all about Jesus. He's your handiwork. We are created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared for us in advance for us to do. And I'm doing it. Now we're walking in it. And now you don't have any wasted time. A lot of people, at the end of their lives, they look back and say, wow, I should have done this. I would have. I should have. I could have. Let's pray right there. Close your eyes. We are God's handiwork. You are God's poema. You are God's work of art. You are God's masterpiece. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. You're not telling him what you want to do. He's telling you what he created you to do. Oh Lord, we come to you and we just ask, continue to show us how blessed we are, how full of mercy and grace that you are, and how that grace elevates us, seats us with Christ in heavenly places, all because of your grace. And now all that outflow of knowing that and being seated in it and relaxing in it, being confident in it, trusting in it, how it overflows into your handiwork, Lord. You have created us with blessings, with abilities, with talents. And Lord, you've even blessed us with things, with the, with the ability and the understanding that there are some gifts we don't have. And that's okay because that guides us to what you don't want us to do. And the gifts and talents you've given to us helps us to do what you have called us to do. For we are your handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared, which you prepared for us to do in advance. From the, before the foundations of the world, you had a plan, and we were part of it. So we rejoice today, Lord. I pray for your people. I pray, Lord, that their hearts will be open and ready for what you're teaching them the next steps that they need to do. Not because of, they, of their desire, the, the spirit of this world's desire, our fleshly desire, but it's because you are showing the spirit's desire what you want them to do. So Lord, so others could experience this glorious life, this abundant life, this beautiful life that you've called us in where we were dead in our transgressions, but now you have made us alive in Christ Jesus. In your name, amen. Amen. We just have a few announcements. If you could get the ushers ready, we're going to pray for this morning's offering. But just a few announcements. On Monday nights, we have Celebrate Recovery. If you're watching online, uh, we, they meet here at from 5.15 for dinner to 6.00. For worship and a lesson or a testimony and then they have a group from 7 to 8 and then on Tuesday mornings we have a Bible study at the Palms at 10 a.m. we're studying through the book of Ephesians um, that's on Hageman and um, Hageman and Knudsen every Tuesday morning and then on Tuesday nights we have our prayer meeting we call it 
pop the power of prayer at 6 o'clock here at the church because we believe we don't want to do anything without hearing from God and knowing God is telling us what God wants us to do at Open Gate Church, what God wants to do with our families, what God wants to do in our personal lives. So that's what that's our church in a nutshell. Let's pray for this morning's offering. Um, Ross, why don't you pray for this morning's offering? Father, we thank you this morning that you um, have blessed us, Lord, with the ability to give back, Lord, with a heart of gratitude, Lord, thanking you, Lord, and just um, being able to um, give, Lord, and that is our way of saying thank you this morning. Lord, we pray for those that may be struggling, Lord, may be going through that, a difficult time in their life, Lord, I pray um, blessings upon them, Lord, and I pray that you would all give us, Lord, a you give us a heart of, of, of a giver, Lord, a heart that wants to help, a heart that wants to give back to you for all that you've done for us, Lord. We're so grateful and thankful for all you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing it, sis. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. Shining through and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Oh Lord, prepare me, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. Shining through and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, sanctuary for you, sanctuary, sanctuary for you each and every. All right, let's stand together. Let me pray a blessing over our church. Just uh, let's say I'm a I'm a transmitter, and you're a receiver. the The connection really doesn't happen very well unless you put the antenna up. Just raise your hand as an antenna. Raise your hand as an antenna. Close your eyes for a few moments. Raise it up. I'm going to pray a God's blessing upon you. And so, Lord, I just pray right now for these who are wanting to receive from you, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that all the blessings, every blessing will begin to come to the front of their minds and thoughts that it would transform their vision and they would see this world from an elevated standpoint because you have seated them in Christ in heavenly places and that whatever they put their hands to do it would prosper it would have an, a, an effect and it would be manifold in your name we pray amen alright have a wonderful week because that's what God has promised us no matter what <laughs> God bless you.